Good morning. This is Mary Catherine. Hello, friends. We're at Red Robin Farm in the kitchen. It's kind of a cold morning. And our blogging friend, Granny Marigold, asked a good question. She wanted to know a little bit more about how I make my herbal tea for myself from uh, here at the farm because she also has some of the same herbs that I use and it's very easy to do Granny Marigold. Um, I'll just show you this little tin. This is a tin, this was a tin of jasmine tea that was given to me and now in, when it was empty I decided to use it because it has a really nice, um, I should have taken this off ahead of time because it's hard to do it with one hand. Oh my goodness. Okay, watch out. There we go. <laughs> All right. This is the list of herbs in this particular tea, and I have liked this blend. I made this last summer or fall, probably. I picked tarragon, lemon balm, lemongrass, and mint. And I do get lemon balm and lemongrass mixed up when I'm talking. I apologize if I mess those up. And you dry it really well. You pick these herbs, and you saw how I dried them on um, the string in my studio, I thought I would show you some of these herbs again. This is the lemon balm, and it's bigger, and that's the growth pattern it has. It does have, as you see here, uh, two nice little stalks. If you pick something about that long, it's easy to hang it because you can hang the main stalk on one side of the string and put these two little ones on the other side, and it hangs pretty sturdily until it gets really dry. And what I found was that I kept on knocking those dry herbs off of that string. The drier they got, the lighter they were. And so they were kept on falling off. So finally, I did take them off the string. But that was a good place to start, and it just looked kind of neat. I love hanging herbs. So that's the lemon balm. This is the mint. These are the two that are growing pretty well outside. And this sounds ridiculous to say, but I don't have as much mint now as I want. I have with great dedication tried to eradicate it from my herb bed because it takes over but now I kinda wish it would do more so but I do have some in pots so here is and, and as you see the mint and they're very similar looking they very they have very highly textured leaves of course you can always tell mint just by smelling it it has a very strong scent the lemon balm does smell lemony let me see yeah there's a little lemon there um, but not as strong as the mint Okay, so here is this combination, and I'll pour some out on this little dish for you. As we look at this, and as we get out of the shadow, I think I like this counter over here better. Let's do this. Nope. Nope. Is there a good spot where, the thing is the light is right overhead. <laughs> oh dear. Let's do this. Okay, here is the lemongrass. It's a nice stiff stalk like that, okay? And you see a few of those in there. And that has a very strong lemon scent. Um, and then if I could pick out some of, oh, it's so tricky to pick these out, some of the tarragon. Tarragon leaves are longer, narrower, smoother, with less serration on the outside of the leaf. As for the rest of these, as you saw with the fresh lemon balm, and mint, it's difficult to tell them apart. And they do curl up and um, get much smaller. My guess is that some of these wide ones like this are probably the, the lemon balm. But it hardly matters at this point. They're all dried and put together. I would say in this tea, I had less lemongrass, less tarragon because I'm not wild about tarragon. Um, it has that same flavor of fennel, and anise and licorice. It's that same family of flavors. And um, I don't like, like I don't like licorice. I don't like lots of anise flavor and stuff, but I don't, I don't mind a little bit, just kind of an enhancement. I see there's a nice big tarragon. So tarragon has that funny flavor, but a little bit of it is just uh, uh, interest and it gives a brightness and the mint gives a brightness. This tin here, and Granny, you'll like this, I got this at a thrift store. Um, it has a little spoon in it that I think my daughter gave me. And this is just black tea. This is Darjeeling. So it is a milder black tea. I don't like real strong teas. And um, what I'll do when I make a pot of tea, let me put this back on the hob, 
and Gretchen Joanna, you'll recognize that teapot. And look, Adam kind of scalded it one day, but you can see it has had lots of use. We really appreciate that cute teapot. I might just put a half a scoop, maybe not even that much. This is not a very big pot. This holds maybe two liquid cups of, um, of tea, but not a lot of tea, and I don't want it really strong, and I don't want to waste my tea because I am somebody who doesn't like to waste things. So then we'll take this, and I don't usually pour it into a dish like this. I did that so that you could see it, but I might just take a pinch. Oops, I lost a little. A second pinch, says the woman who doesn't like to waste things. <laughs> okay. Um, and put that in the pot. And then over here on my, this is my little hutch, with so many of my favorite tea things out here, I have my tea cups hanging. All of these cups were given to me by a very dear friend. I love that pattern with the green and white. It's kind of an old diner pattern or maybe like a hotel, uh, not really a diner, maybe a hotel pattern. And she gave me some dishes, so the little dish is also that same pattern. Anyway, so I grab my sugar, which I keep handy, and I, um, I just prefer to go ahead and add I'm doing this with my left hand, so it's a little tricky. <laughs> Add um, about a teaspoon of sugar. Then we'll pour our tea right in there. And oh, if you were all here, I would get out the cups, and we would all have tea. And I would get out some bigger pots. All right, oh, there we go. I'm doing all this left-handed. I usually am a little faster. So there's our pot of tea. What did I do with the tea cozy? Here it is. This is not much of a cozy, but I like that it goes on. I, mean, I can put that on and take it off. Oh, sorry, Lisa, you'll note that I did that without showing the <laughs> having this camera on the right spot. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing. I can just put it on and drape it over. It's really an ideal cozy. Um, I do prefer cozies that you don't have to take on and off in order to access the tea. But once I've stirred this, I don't really have to get to it again. Um, so, And that's an easy one to get on and off. The other thing I wanted to mention here was this little tin. This is an old Twinings tin. I do keep my Twinings tins. Where are my rest of them? I'm not sure why. Oh, they're way up on the cabinet. But um, this is just dried time. And I'm going to put the camera down for just a second. Um, I apologize. I'm going to take the lid off of this and show you what I did wrong with this thyme tea. I dried it. Um, I have, I think, English thyme, and it's very small, very, very small leaf. But as you can see, looking inside that tin, there's rust in there, and that's because I put this um, thyme tea in when it was very, still, uh, not very, but a little bit wet and it rusted the inside of the tin. I'm probably getting a little bit of iron <laughs> when I drink that. It doesn't worry me a lot. I am not a finicky person. If something's been in the refrigerator a little long than Adam would prefer, I'll go ahead and eat it. Now, I don't eat moldy food or anything like that, but um, I, uh, I don't worry about things quite as much as he does. My mother had a dear friend many years ago, an elderly lady. Let's take our tea. And I will go into the studio. But anyway, this elderly lady did not refrigerate her milk. She left it on the counter. And um, she drank it anyway. And, of course, it tasted curdled. Oh, I just turned the light off. I apologize for the incredible darkness. It's kind of a cold day. It looks like it might get sunshiny later on. Here's our Easter lilies from church that we brought home. Those will go into a, um, into a bed later on. Anyway, she drank the curdled milk, and it never did her any harm. So now we're in the studio with some light coming in the window. That's so cheering. I took my celery and put it in a pot. But here's the other two still trying to germinate. Uh, not germinate. What are they doing? They're rooting. So um, anyway, here's my teapot. I need to go get a cup. And I did want to show you the herbs that I took off of the string. I put them in this basket so they would still get plenty of air, okay? And they're sitting here and I keep a cloth over them because you really don't want it to get dusty. I'm gonna let them dry a nice long time. 
And you can see, this is the lemon balm. It has a green stem even when it's dry. And this is the mint, and it has a purple stem when it's dry. And that's how I can tell the difference. Not that it's really important. But um, if you look at them next to each other, you can see a um, slightly different shape of the leaf. The nice thing about making your own herb tea is you can pick the herbs you like. Um, you can grow what you like. Let me turn him down a little bit. Thank you very much. Um, and you can adjust the flavor as you like. And I didn't think I would like tarragon, but I do. Adam really intended to cook with our herbs, but um, I've enjoyed using them too. I love to grow them. I don't tend to go and snip them for dishes. Of course, he's our cook. Well, the other thing I thought I would show you today is the knitting I've been doing. I am not a knitter like Pom Pom is. She's a fancy knitter. If you haven't seen Pom Pom's blog, oh my goodness, she knits little bears and she knits clothing, sweaters, things that are fitted with sleeves and waists. And I've done some of that in the past, but um, I find it challenging and it doesn't always turn out like I want. Um, there are some skills, we all know that there are some talents and skills and crafts that are very satisfying as we master them and others that are only frustrating. <laughs> so I do still knit. This is a fun pattern. Um, if you can see that, it, maybe it just looks like an airy uh, yarn over pattern, but um, I really like the look of, this part is nice and bumpy. See that? And I like that look, and I'll tell you why it does that. Let me um, just, if you're a knitter, you'll be able to get this pattern just by listening to me. Um, you start off with however many rows on the bottom. I think, isn't that stockinette stitch where you knit the whole time? And uh, so it ends up looking like knit pearl, knit pearl. Um, so that's the edging. And then the rest of this little scarf, and you could use this for a blanket. You could use it for a shawl. Um, you have six knit stitches on either side. Okay, every row is knit. And then on the interior of the scarf, you have alternating rows. Every other row is just a knit row. The pattern row goes like this. You, ha you do your six knits, then you yarn over. Then you knit three. And you lift with your fingers that first knit, th knit stitch of the three, and you lift it over the other two. And it gives that, I think that that's where this, I'm sure that that's where this bumpy effect comes from. The lifting over of the stitch. How oh, I wish this camera would focus better than it does. I think I'm supposed to use the zoom, but if I use the zoom, the camera cuts off on me. It cuts off on me unexpectedly anyway, and um, I don't like that. So, oh, here's good. I ended with one of the, with the pattern row, and so you can see, you can see um, how it went. Here is, here is one of the yarn overs next to it, before it, you can see here, this bumpiness at the end of my thumbnail. That is the stitch that I lifted and put over top of these two stitches here. It's just, I, it looks like a little haystack to me for some reason. It's just a cute little stitch. It's not hard to do. I like things that look good but aren't too difficult and don't require too much brain power. Um, but I did have to write down that little stitch um, for myself. So that I, because I will go for months without working on something, and then when I come back, I don't even remember how to do the stitch. <laughs> so, but you do have, you'll need to count out how many you cast on to accommodate for that pattern and for how wide you want it to be. Okay, and then here's this, um, this is nothing but knit, nothing but knit on these big size 19 needles, and um, that's totally mindless work. It goes pretty fast. I mentioned this scarf before. I make this into a double infinity scarf. It's a very large scarf. And one whole skein of this um, thick and quick makes a very big double infinity scarf. And you knit the whole long thing. You do one rotation, not a full rotation, not a 360, kind of 180 of um, the scarf so that it has, um, what do they call that? It starts with an M. I don't remember what they call it, um, when an infinity scarf has that one turn, and it help it's t helps it to lay better. Um, well, before I go, um, some of you give me some really sweet encouragement about these videos, and I so appreciate that. Uh, I really do, because I just wasn't sure. 
about my voice. I have a very southern accent. I didn't, don't think I do, but I do. Anyway, I appreciate your encouragement. I thought I'd show you something I make. This looks like a mess, doesn't it? It is a mess. Every time I make it, it's a mess. <laughs> this is the bee balm, the lotion I gave. And I got the uh, that I make and sell at the market. And um, um, G Gumbo Lily uh, posted this recipe on her blog and I trusted her not only because she seems eminently trustworthy and capable and knowledgeable and hardworking, but because she's a rancher's wife in Mon Montana. And if anybody would know and use really beneficial hand creams for dry chapped skin, it would have to be a rancher's wife in Montana. And boy, was she right. Okay, so this is my little tub, but this is what it looks like. It's kind of a creamy... Oh, I'm sorry. I have to turn off, especially this fella. He's so annoying. Huh. Okay. I like the guitar music, but oh, I don't like the ads. Um, it's kind of creamy, smooth, um, but it's not creamy like milky. There is no um, butter in this. There are oils in this. Um, and I melt it all in a double boiler like this. Okay, so my double boiler is constantly has oil and beeswax in it and I have to I have to clean it with boiling water to get the beeswax out. Um, the proportions are important. For every four ounces of olive oil you use one ounce of beeswax and that's a lot of beeswax and mine, um, oh I can't get it out now, but my beeswax comes in blocks and so it's, uh, I have to cut it by hand. Adam sometimes does it for me but if he's busy I have to do it myself and it's not easy but it's worth it. This product, oh my goodness, people just love this. Um, I do put it into tubs, little um, tubs that look like this. This is a double wall tub that I order online and, and the lids too and I uh, put a little sticker on the top and um, it's designed for cosmetic products so it keeps it really well and I sell, this is a four ounce half cup tub and I sell this for seven dollars and we did crunch the numbers to make sure that I was you know making adequate profit on it and I am um, although it is a it's, su it's such a messy pain in the neck that if it didn't sell so well I would not make it <laughs> because I don't like the mess. I would make it for myself. I use this as my facial moisturizer. I use it twice a day, and I've used it for years now. I forget when Jody gave this uh, recipe out, but I've been doing this for five years probably. But I have so many folks, especially older people, who come and tell me that they use it on their feet at night, that, that they have cracked skin, really dry, parched skin, winter skin, painful skin. Um peeling skin and they use it. I've had people say that they put it on very mild skin abrasions and that it um, it heals it. So I, you make olive oil, beeswax, I've told you those proportions. For every ounce of beeswax you put one big tablespoon of coconut oil um, and it's solid so I kind of do this big heaping tablespoon kind of thing. And then um, I also put in a little bit of vitamin E oil. I like maybe a teaspoon for a batch that I make. And then I sprinkle in a little bit of grapefruit essential oil. Um, it's the only scent that's in there. It makes it palpable for gentlemen to use. And I have a lot of men that use this because they have worse skin than the women do. And they do care about it when they get old. And that's really it. Um, and I increase this to 24 ounces of olive oil and 6 ounces of beeswax to make a nice big batch. And I probably get, oh, 9 or 10 tubs like this when I make a batch like that. Um, but there have been weeks at the market where I, where I will sell 5 or 6. Um, sometimes at Christmas I'll sell 10 on, on one day. So um, that's it, it requires me to make a good bit of it. The other thing I've been doing is... Um, I had customers ask me if I could put it into a smaller container so that they could have a purse size and carry it with them. I have people who use this on their lips instead of lip balm. And so I ordered these little little containers. There's two of them. No, there's just one. No, there's just one there. And um, this will fit in your purse. Um, I think that's a hmm, half ounce. Is that right? Um, and so you can also travel with it. And uh, the TSA won't give you down the road. Um, so that's what I have been making yesterday. I made a batch of that. Today I'll make a batch of lip balm, which is a much stiffer product. I've also made my 